But just to kill people wholesale just like that, because someone disagrees with you, because someone has another opinion, that's from the big issues in Al-Islam. He mentions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِ يَقْتُلَ مُؤْمِنَا إِلَّا خَطَأَ It is not permissible for a believer to kill another believer except by accident. Except by accident. And if he kills a man who's a Muslim by accident, he has to play the dia. He has to pay his family for making the children orphans, making the wife a widow, making the mother and the father lose their child. He's responsible for that. That's from the hikmah of Allah's legislation. He mentioned in the same surah, ayat after that, وَمَنْ يَقْتُ الْمُؤْمِنَ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَدِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَعَنَهُ وَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابٍ عَظِيمًا Anyone who kills a believer intentionally, intentionally, then he's going to be in the hellfire forever. And Allah will be angry with him. And Allah will curse him. And Allah has prepared the grievous punishment. You're not going to find too many sins in the Quran that give you all of those descriptions. The anger of Allah, the curse of Allah, and the hellfire forever. Not too many sins are like that. And the murder of something, the murder of someone is like that. So he said about the people that they kill the people of Islam and leave the people of al Uthan, which doesn't mean it's okay just to kill non-Muslims. He told the people in the authentic hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith goes to show the importance of shedding blood, whoever the blood happens to belong to. لَا يَزَالُ الْمَرْءُ فِي فُسْحَةً مِنْ دِينِهِ مَا لَمْ يَسْلِكْ دَمٍ حَرَامٍ A person will always have a chance to be forgiven, to go to Jannah. He will always have a chance in his deen, in his dunya, to be forgiven. As long as he didn't spill the blood, that was haram. So from the dangers of the khawarij is, you don't want to be on the side of the khawarij because the khawarij from their religion, from what they are, who they are, is shedding blood is easy. And that's a danger in this deen. That is a danger in this deen. There are different groups of khawarij. They're not just in one place. Khawarij is a mentality. Khawarij is a behavior. A person can have the behavior, the mentality of the khawarij, and he can be an outright khariji. So that is one of the reasons why they were called the khawarij. They would see themselves as being the ones. They're the murja. They're the points of reference. What they understood was right, and what everybody else understood was wrong. And as a result of that difference of opinion, they would pull the sword out after that, no matter who you were. No matter who you were, the Khawarij are those people who, as you're going to see, inshallah, they have a really low opinion about other people. They will kill their mother or their father, their brother, their sister, their cousin. They will kill their own cousin. And they would do it making a taqarrub in Allah, getting close to Allah. Then what do you think about the scholars? Someone in this masjid right now can exist believing and understanding, hey, hey, you know those scholars that you're talking about, scholars, scholars? He puts his thobe on the same way I put my thobe on. He puts his pants on the same way I put my pants on. He puts his socks on the same way I put my socks on. His shoes the way I put my shoes. And he talks like that. We're not saying that the scholars of Islam are infallible. But Allah gave the ulama of Islam a special position. Not a position to be blindly followed. When they make a mistake, we listen, we follow them. But to respect them, it's like your mother and your father. It's like your mother and your father. My mother is a non-Muslim. My father is a non-Muslim. If one of them stepped into this masjid right now, I'm going to respect them. Why? Because that man is responsible by Allah's permission, and that lady is responsible. They're responsible for my life. So Islam doesn't allow me to deal with them anyway. The skull is like that. you like your mother and your father. But the one who has that khariji mentality, he doesn't, it doesn't make sense to him. What makes sense to him is, very, the ruling is only for Allah, and that's it. That's what makes sense. The ruling is only for Allah, and that's it. So those are some of the reasons why the ulama call them the khawarij. From that hadith that we just mentioned. The hadith of the man taking out the sword after reading the Quran. 
it goes to show Ikhwani as the Prophet mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the dangers of the Khawarij is if you don't have knowledge and you're not connected to people of knowledge and you're making this you're making decisions based upon your hawa, your emotions, then it's easy to get tricked by the Khawarij. Because they read the Quran. Because he defended Islam. The hadith said that. In another hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tahkuruna Salata Kuminda Salatiyam Musiyama Kuminda Salat He said, You know, to the companions, your salat and your siyam, you're going to see it as being small and insignificant to theirs. Abdullah bin Abbasin, when he went to debate the Khawarij during the fitna with Ali, he said, As I got close, I saw those people praying. I heard them making dhikr of Allah. He started describing them. They had big black spots on their heads because they were burning themselves from the salah. He said that their knees were like the knees of camels. So many sajdas, so many rukur, so much. So the one who doesn't have any knowledge, he says what we heard today at our lunch table. We were eating and the young brother, may Allah ta'ala give him khair, he said, you know, here we are eating all of this food and we are filling our stomachs and some of our brothers are going overseas and they gave up everything. They gave up opulent lifestyle. They gave up this country. They gave up this way. And they would have made sacrifices. That's the danger of the Khawarij. The danger is that the Khawarij is not, he doesn't appear as an immoral person. Smoking, drinking, he doesn't appear like that. He appears like someone who's practicing the religion. So the Muslim, what he has to do is, he has to weigh what people are saying, and he has to also look at what they're doing, and he has to do that based upon the kitab and the sunnah. If he doesn't know the kitab and the sunnah, he has to do it using the help of the people who know. Now look, from the problem with the khawarij, the danger of the khawarij, is that that man who read the Quran, he can't change the Quran. The Quran is thabit. The meaning is thabit. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, Inna We sent down this Quran and we're going to protect the Quran. No one can come and change the Quran. That man, that the Prophet was afraid for his ummah. From that man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he can't change the Quran. The Quran is there. But he changes the meaning of the Quran. He gives a tafsir of the Qur'an that's not the correct tafsir. He takes ayat that Allah revealed on and because of the mushrikeen. And he puts them on the Muslims. There's an ayat that says, فَقْتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَتَّمُوهُمْ Kill, slaughter the mushrikeen, wherever you find them. So he justifies his ayat that was revealed on and because of the people of Quraysh. And the people will like the people of Quraysh. This ayat is talking about mushrikeen, mushrikeen. It's not talking about the Muslim who's making a mistake, the Muslim who doesn't agree with you. So he'll take that ayat and he'll put it on the Muslims. How does he do it? How does he do it? I can give you a lot of examples. One example is he doesn't like me. He doesn't like me. So as a result of not liking me, He'll blow me up and blow you people up as well because I'm a mushrik and because you came to listen, you're a mushrik. That ayat was not revealed on me and it wasn't revealed on the people here. Who does that? Who does that? That man who read the Quran, read the Quran, he takes the ayat of the Quran that were revealed for the hukam of Islam. It's revealed for the Muslim leaders like the command of Allah Ta'ala. Obey Allah, Muslims, and obey the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and obey those who have been put in authority from amongst you, meaning the hukam and the ulama. So the Khawarij guy here in the UK, or in the UK, this ayat, obey those who have been put in authority over you, he takes that ayat and he says, this is talking about us. So I take the bayah, I establish the hudud, cut people's heads off, cut people's necks off, because the ayah said, obey those in authority. I'm in authority, we're in authority, so we're going to do this. So that man, 
He doesn't change the Quran because it can't be changed. It's divinely protected, but he changes the meaning of the Quran and he gives a tafsir and the ta'wil explanation of the Quran that is far away from the Quran. As a result of that, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, he was extremely concerned. So he warned his community, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from this type of characteristic and this particular action. That's not our religion. So my advice to you all is, get knowledge of the religion from the proper people and the proper sources. Those people have been endowed and blessed with knowledge of this religion. Have a good opinion about the ulama and don't be maghroor with your own self.